Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Little Theatre Gate set. May I remind you, for the benefit of the cast and other patrons, to ensure that any mobile phones or pages are switched off prior to this evening's performance. Thank you. I was once told that a director is like a teacher, but I don't see myself as a teacher. I've never seen myself as a teacher. I feel that directing is more like a conductor conducting a, an orchestra of any size. It doesn't matter how big it is. The number of people who are in that orchestra, they all know what they have to play and the conductor brings them all together. And that's how I see myself as a director. Yes, I don't want a total blackout between act two and three. That, 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 the way that that's done was, was great. That's exactly what we wanted, yes. We were doing The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. It's one of the most popular Wilde plays. And it's, it's, it's just so popular, people come from miles around to see it. It's so well known by title, by author, and by one particular character, being Lady Bracknell, Sylvia's character, that audiences come to see it with an expectation. And when this play was written, 1895, nobody would have heard of Lady Bracknell, apart from perhaps a few snippets in the local press about what Wilde was trying to plan with this character. But now, the character is so well known that you get a reaction. It's anticipation. She had a very great problem with my handbag. How I pronounced the handbag. <laughs> yes. I think it was only, was it just the last rehearsal where John had found it acceptable? Yes. <laughs> I think that's fair. And I, yes, I think it was the last rehearsal when she found it acceptable, yes. And then again, I didn't, even, I didn't know if she was saying it just to put me at ease. <laughs> I can't believe I ever actually said it the way she wanted me to. It contained the manuscript of a three-volume novel of extremely... Sorry, I've done it again. Of more than, more than usually repugnant sentimentality. But the big Oh, yes, there are some there. difficult speeches. There are some long speeches in this play. Prison. And they... Um, they have to get them just right, you know. We're all Geordies, and this play has to be done in a beautiful accent, King's English, Queen's English, whatever you like to call it. And it's got to be, the, the words have to be carefully spoken, and we have to think about the vowel sounds. With us being northerners, the vowel sounds are very, very important. But they're getting it, they're doing very nicely. Well, they start rehearsing when the other play is still rehearsing, if you know what I mean. So, although this one is almost ready to go on the boards, the other play, which will come on after that, has already been rehearsing for about three or four weeks. So, I suppose about six or eight weeks, really. Because each play is rehearsing while the, while the next one is rehearsing. So they're rehearsing in tandem. But only one can be on the stage, of course, so... The other one rehearses in our rehearsal room, which is downstairs. <laughs> yes. Hmm? Yes, they're really nice, aren't they? Made of beaver, I think they're called, aren't they? You, know, you never fancy the stage yourself, no? I have been in one. Oh, right. Yes, I was uh, the posh lady in uh, the 15 streets, you know, the Catherine Cookson play? Well, you probably don't know it, but everybody in the theatre was in it. <laughs> Because it was a cast of thousands, you know. So I did, I did tread the boards once, yeah. but I, I just don't have a very good memory, you know. Getting old, <laughs> I'm frightened to have a senior moment on stage and forget my lines. Yeah, I've taken prompts, I've tripped up, um, I've choked on things when I'm supposed to be eating, uh, spilled drinks on myself, sneezed, coughed. There's no use speculating on that subject. Divorces are made in heaven. Uh, please don't touch the cucumber sandwiches. They are ordered specially for Aunt Augusta. Well, you've been eating them all the time. First time I've ever done props, so I'm glad it's not too complicated. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I think I could just about run to making cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> I know once I've made my sandwiches and done the muffins, I'm done. Apart from my 20 second walk on part with the two cake stands. Well, that's not big pressure. True, though, isn't it? What's you that? hand me all my stuff. I do, but I've got a list of instructions telling me when to do that. It makes it a whole lot easier. <laughs> I have to ring a bell. That's quite exciting. I'm going to make sure I get that right. <laughs> We don't rehearse for very long. We do ten plays a year, so we don't have an awful lot of time in between plays. So about six, seven weeks we've been rehearsing. They're starting to get nervous, you see. But as soon as they get an audience in front of them tomorrow night, it'll be just great. I just know it will. I'm terrified, absolutely terrified. I never know what's going to happen. And anything that goes wrong, it's all my fault. I just know it's his. I sort of get this sort of fluttery feeling about here somewhere. And uh, I, I, then I just, I just have to wait. Just, you know, it's one of these, the audience comes in, they sit and chatter for a bit, and we sit and wait with them. And I think, oh, is this never going to start? For God's sake, let's get something started here. Yeah. You shot that. Can I get the match on now? No. No. What am I going to do? It's suicide, isn't it? I think they go quiet rather than having anything in particular that they do. Yeah, I think it's just quiet. <laughs> and they, a lot of them do sit with their book and cover over and you know, sort of slide down, test themselves on the lines. I'm, uh, I'm quite a nervous person as it is, so I will be uh, a bit jittery on the opening night, I would think. But uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a rush to perform in front of 200 people, and that's what, that's what keeps you keeps you added to the adrenaline, you know. Um. I've got a bit of psyching up to do because I'm I'm a sort of a pacer, so I'll probably pace for the next hour or so, just sort of going through my lines in my head and just preparing for it. Um, so I don't feel I'm ready at this moment in time, but hopefully within an hour I should be. How are you? It's nice. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what it is, I'm breaking it now. Right. You're just in the rain, yeah? Yeah, I've just part me car there. I'm really getting the jitters now, like... See, when you first start reading for a play, it's miles off. But when push comes to shove, the old heart's got the clappers. <laughs> Nasty bit of work. Yes, I have one little superstition. I, uh, I tap my foot on the, tr the stage trap door three times before the play begins. Because that goes back to a time when I was in a play and I had to make an entrance through the trap door and part of the way up the ladder leading up to the trap door level, my foot got caught in the ladder and I had to play the rest of the scene visible only from the neck up. <laughs> Saying all my lines from that sort of level. So ever since then, I've tapped three times with my foot on the stage trap door. It's my only superstition. Which play was that, Jim? And I've only just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> very worried. Very worried. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll be beautiful because they're, they're all really dedicated. I've been upstairs at the club room and they're, they're all sitting there being terribly relaxed. I sort of think, oh well, they're very relaxed. I should be relaxed, but I don't know if it'll work. <laughs> oh, well, some of the older people who've been coming here year after year, they know us very well. And when we get somebody new on the stage, they'll say, Oh, like him, have him in the next play. Go on, oh, put him in the next play. And we think, Well, we can't just do that. And if they don't like a play, oh, they let us know. Oh, they really do. They don't like bad language, um, they don't like nudity. Uh, Oh, what else? Oh, there's, there's all sorts of little things that they don't like. Although, mind you, they love a good murder. Oh, blood and gore everywhere, they love that. It's the older people again who like it. Mm, you know, <laughs> you, you sell a lot of these things, right? 
Oh yes, we got a lot of ice cream, yes. <laughs> I didn't think it polite to listen, sir. I'm sorry for that, for your sake. I don't play accurately. I worry terribly because I know that I have done plays that haven't been as successful as this one, um, haven't been anywhere near as good. But this one I felt was well, not bad. And when you get people saying, oh, that was lovely, I think, oh, great, lovely, oh, it's all been worthwhile. Tapping the lads some blood toes. <laughs> I says I, I, I use that as a fund, a fund, as, as if somebody would say girl. Uh huh. That's alright. Because I, we were, it was ours. Right. I think we're being recorded. Oh. <laughs> 